I've been living in the Philippines for almost four years now and have visited the majority of the islands. Now there's 7,641 islands in the Philippines. So when I say majority, I mean the majority of the bigger cities and towns. So I'd like to think I've got a pretty good idea of which are the best places to live and which are the best places not to live in the Philippines. Hello, good morning, good evening and welcome to Big World Cinema. Without further ado, we'll continue with what you're here for. I read a number of posts on Facebook with the question, which is the best place to live in the Philippines? And commenters will respond with a whole variety of answers, generally dismissing Manila even though they probably never stepped outside of Manila Airport. It really does depend on what you're into and what type of life you want to live here. So whilst considering destinations to live in the Philippines, what are you actually considering? Are you looking to replicate what you have in your own country or are you looking for a completely different experience? Just to put some context into my situation, I grew up in Essex, just outside London. The city of London played a major role in my life. At 18 years of age, I got a job as an office clerk in St Paul's, near St Paul's Cathedral. So I would commute into London for five years from my parents' home in Essex. Then when I hit 30, I got a job at a university in West London. So moved into lodgings in West Ealing and remained living in London for a further 17 years. So yeah, I love what a big city offers. I also love beaches. In my late 40s, I moved to Brighton on the south coast of England, which is a city with a beach attached. Well, it's not really a decent beach. It's got pebbles, which not only are a pain to walk on, but also a pain in the butt to sit on after five minutes. But living by the sea is spiritually uplifting for me. So I remained in Brighton for 10 years until I moved to Asia in December 2019. So I'm a city boy who loves beaches. I love street life, somewhere easily walkable. Ideally, I'd like to start my day walking along a boulevard, a boardwalk or a beach. But not all places can offer this. I love being outside, spending time visiting parks, open spaces, sitting outside our fresco cafes or diners, sitting and reading. So the place I choose to live needs not to be too over polluted with jeepney fumes or heavy traffic. I love being stimulated by creative stuff, visiting museums, galleries, and being inspired by culture. I also enjoy reading, so ideally I'd like to be near a city or town with a decent bookshop. Most cities in the Philippines will have the national bookstore, but their stock is quite limited. Does the place feel safe? I'm always being told to go and live in Brazil or Cape Town, which are big cities with beaches attached but why would I choose to live somewhere where I was constantly on guard, fearing my crown jewels are going to be snatched from me any second? Also close to an international airport where I can get away whenever I feel like it. It needs to have good health care, a decent hospital, and quite importantly, a decent gym where I can work out every day. Can I replicate the life I lived in the UK somewhere in the Philippines. I'm not asking too much, am I? I'm gonna start by listing places I've lived in for the last four years in the Philippines, which I'm considering as a long-term option. And I'm also gonna talk about the places that I'm not considering, which you might be familiar with. Enjoy. Cebu is a big city that doesn't really feel like a big city. I spent a lot of time in Cebu. 
As Cebu was my first destination when I arrived in the Philippines, I have an affinity with the city and feel comfortable living there. In times of Covid, I'd walk around the city in a couple of hours. Lived there for 32 months up to November 2022, then another three months recently this year. The beauty with Cebu is that there is so much also on offer nearby. If you live in Cebu City, within three hours you've got easy access to decent beach towns such as Muol Buol plus neighbouring islands off the coast of Cebu such as Bantayan, Malapascua and Camotes. But I always feel that Cebu is lacking something when I'm living there. It has some good places to dine and hang out, but not that many. During my most recent three month stint in Cebu, I warmed to the IT park area, which does offer some good outdoor bars and restaurants. There's also a nice roof garden on top of the mall at SM Seaside, although when you're only listing malls as good places to hang out, then something's missing. Living in Cebu City, you can just take a ride for half an hour up to the hills and visit the gardens around Sorau, where there's also good restaurants and great views of Cebu City below. Would I want to live permanently in Cebu? Probably not. Living in Cebu City, you've also got some great neighbouring larger islands such as Bohol, Leyte and Negros. It's funny when people say that sort of thing. We've got some great places nearby. Surely the whole point of living somewhere is living there rather than what nearby offers. Although in the case of Dumaguete, being close to the neighbouring islands of Sikior and Mindanao far outweigh the benefits of actually living in Dumaguete. Manila has for me what Cebu lacks. Before I arrived in Manila, I hadn't found the perfect place to live. No shit Sherlock, I hear you cry. Viewers advised me that if I want alfresco bars, cafes and diners, I'd find them in BGC or Makati, which are on offer in abundance there. Other viewers would say it's too crowded and noisy. Perfect. Last year I lived in Metro Manila for almost six months, in Guadalupe Nuevo, on the other side of the wall from BGC, and also a 15 minute jeepney ride from Makati. Most of what I needed was on my doorstep in Guadalupe. Living in a Filipino neighbourhood was great, rather than amongst expats paying western prices for condo rental in high-tech BGC. Didn't take me too long to realise how much I preferred Manila over Cebu, as it's got much more going for it. Yeah, the traffic can be frustrating. If you want to go anywhere outside the area you're living, you'll be stuck in traffic for ages. But there is a metro system to take you to other parts of Metro Manila, such as Quezon City. But it's not like I'm battling with traffic every day, as travelling outside my zone is a rare thing. So yeah, Manila is a place I could live full time. We might as well just end the video here. All it lacks is a decent beach. But Boracay is only an hour away, so you could be there quicker than the time it takes to travel to one of the islands off Cebu from Cebu City. Which leads me nicely to Boracay. I've visited Boracay twice now. Stayed for a week on my first visit and four days on my second. 
Whenever I consider beach destinations, I always use the beaches of India as a yardstick. At the rear of the beautiful beaches scattered along the Goan coastline are a number of beach shacks, restaurants, resorts. So you can sit and have your lunch, a beer or lie in your bed and look out over a beach view. I was wanting a beach in the Philippines to replicate that. Here at BWC, Uncle doesn't charge a subscription fee like Auntie does, but buying us a coffee would be much appreciated. Thank you. I found it in Boracay. I instantly felt affinity to Boracay on my first visit. Many people say it's overcrowded and touristy, but you can get away from the crowds who all gather at the same spot at Station 2 to take pictures of sunset by escaping to the beach across the other side of the island, a 10 minute walk away, where nobody goes. When I visited Boracay for my first visit, I thought at the time I'd like to stay there for a longer period of time. But on my second visit, I didn't feel the same. I didn't feel that I could live in Boracay for that much longer. It does feel quite expensive for my budget. Could I live permanently at a beach destination anyway? I've spent two long winter stints at beaches in India, but after three months, I'm exhausted of the small village vibe and craving for crowds. I feel the same about Pang Lao. Pang Lao is located in the province of Bohol, next to Bohol Island. I've spent a week on Pang Lao, staying at a loner beach, but I have also visited a number of the other beaches on Pang Lao Island. Pang Lao has some of the finest beaches in the Philippines. White sandy beaches with an assortment of beachside bars and restaurants where I can enjoy a sundowner, write my journal, read my book and people watch. I would like to spend more time exploring these beaches on Pang Lao. But not being a scooter driver, Pang Lao Island feels too remote. When the sun goes down and darkness kicks in, it feels isolated with a lack of options. At least living in the city, you have an option of being able to walk the streets after dark or walk around the mall. Pang Lao just reminds me of small islands that shut down at sunset and you're in the dark until sunrise. But the attraction of Pang Lao is being close to Tagbalaran City on Bohol Island, where I stayed for 10 nights. I love Bohol. It's one of my favourite islands in the whole of the Philippines. The people are great. Sure, the people are great everywhere in the Philippines. But I found Baholians to be particularly welcoming. Specifically, when I returned to the island from Mindanao en route to Dumaguete and took a trike from the bus station to the port. With the driver requesting the local fare, rather than increasing the price tenfold, which has happened quite frequently in other places in the Philippines. But not so on the whole. But the city is lacking. There's a couple of small malls and alfresco places to chill, but that's about it, which is a shame. With its proximity to great beaches on Pang Lao, if Tag Balaram was a bigger city with more to offer, it would be a great place to live. Maybe in 10 years time, when I'm dead. So back to Mindanao. I speak a lot about my love of India, having visited the country nine times over the past 27 years. So I find the large island of Mindanao with its diverse blend of cultures, particularly appealing. If you've been watching my recent videos from Mindanao, you'll know I've just spent a month traveling in the area known as the Red Zone, which is considered an unsafe part of Mindanao to travel. 
As much as it was great visiting half a dozen cities and towns where few foreigners frequent, it's probably not a good idea living there permanently. Not that there was enough to make me want to live in those smaller cities anyway, but larger Mindanao cities tell a different story. I've spent a week in Cagayan de Oro, which has a vibrant street life. It's not a particularly huge city and pretty easy to navigate, with a number of malls and condos near to each other and everything you need within a close proximity. I've also spent a fortnight in Davao, which is a much larger city, declared the second safest city in Southeast Asia behind Chiang Mai in Thailand. I stayed in a lovely Airbnb with a breathtaking view over Somal Island. There were a handful of expats living in that condo block who gathered at the pool each day. The pool was great and the complex also had an okay gym. If that Airbnb condo I was staying in became available a long time, I'd have jumped at it. I shall be returning to give these two cities a more thorough going over, plus also considering the cooler city of Malabalai in Bukidnon and General Santos City. So my current shortlist of where I live in the Philippines is actually uh, quite short. But there are a few places in Mindanao which still have potential, so watch this space. So what about the cities or towns that I've uh, negated, <laughs> such as Dumaguete or Duma Regretti, as I like to refer to it, as so many foreigners have followed such bad advice by moving there, only to instantly regret it. I've been there twice now, stayed there a fortnight each visit. Each time I'm there, I'm reminded of the Clash song, City of the Dead. On my second visit, I warmed to the place a bit more, found some decent places to eat, walked the boardwalk many times, trying to work up some enthusiasm for the city, which is no bigger than a town really but still struggle to find words to fill the space on a postcard to send home. You should live in Ilo Ilo, they say. Why? I ask. I've also stayed there twice now. Ilo Ilo is often mentioned as a fast growing modern city and does have a lovely vibe, but it's not growing as fast as I'd like it to. Apart from the lovely riverside walk, which is, uh, strangely enough, a walkway that runs beside the river, I find Ilo Ilo to be too spread out and lacking a proper city centre as such, apart from the area called City Proper, which is not really a proper city after all. Try Bacolod, they say. I've visited Bacolod twice now. <laughs> the best thing about Bacolod was travelling 15 kilometres away to Silay City, which was known in the past as the Paris of Negros and the cultural and intellectual hub of Negros. Due to the residents' love for knowledge and works of art. So maybe I should spend more time there. 15 kilometers away from Bacolod. So that's about it. Palawan? Nah, I found Puerto Princesa City, like a lot of Palawan, to be quite dirty. Mindoro? No thanks. Angeles? Horrible. The only other uncharted territory that's due a visit is Leyte. Unless there's other places in the Philippines which you, as my viewers, may think would be a decent fit for me, then kindly let me know in the comment section below. 
Otherwise, I'm going to live in Manila. See you there. Take care. Just a quick reminder to please click the thumbs up button if you liked the video or thumbs down button if you didn't. Obviously. Thank you.
Just a quick reminder to please click the thumbs up button if you liked the video, or thumbs down button if you didn't. Obviously. Thank you. You've been watching Uncle, the man from Big World Cinema. Please like, subscribe and share with your friends.